Mazzy Starr was responsible for the early 90s sleeper hit Fade Into You. The core of the group would be made up of David Roback, who wrote most of the band's music and served as a multi-instrumentalist. He would be joined by frontwoman Hope Sandoval, who wrote most of the lyrics, the breathy vocalist with a haunting yet hopeful voice. Part of the band's magic came from the soulmate-like connection between Roback and Sandoval. The pair was rumored to be briefly a couple around the time of recording their debut record, She Hangs Brightly. The song Fade Into You became an anthem for lovelorn teenagers in the 90s and a favorite amongst music supervisors in Hollywood, appearing in more than 30 movies and television shows. Ben Harper, Kelly Clarkson, and Dinosaur Jr. are just a few of the artists who have covered the song. And today we're going to explore the history of the song, the meaning behind it, and why it's a little bit misunderstood. Before David Roback became a musician, he found himself in New York City in the late 70s, wanting to become a painter, telling the LA Times in 1990, I went to New York mainly to be part of the art scene but I gradually found myself getting more inspired by what was happening in music than in art. People like Patti Smith and television. And while he identified with artists who were instrumental in the punk rock scene, the sound he soon started developing was anything but. Adding in the same interview, I felt like a punk. That's the attitude I identified with. But when I picked up the guitar and started playing it, the music didn't come out sounding punk. It was something else. After a brief stint in New York, he would head back to Los Angeles. Roback would play in several bands in the 80s, being part of what was known as the Paisley Underground Movement in LA, which combined psychedelic sounds with rich vocals. Roback's early groups included Rain Parade and Rainy Day, before he started the group Opal with vocalist Kendra Smith. Smith would eventually depart the group, and Roback, who had previously known Sandoval, as she was already a fan of his work, would take Smith's spot. Roback at the time already had a label deal with Rough Trade, having already released one album. However, as Sandoval and Roback began working on what would have been Opal's second record, they soon scrapped the material. Sandoval was unhappy with the sound and the quality of the music that the pair had come up with, and wanted a fresh start, so they formed a new group called Mazzy Star, and they would quickly record seven new songs. Mazzy Star's sound seemed to be heavily influenced by the Paisley Underground, and drew many comparisons to the group Cowboy Junkies. These tracks became the basis for Mazzy Starr's debut record, 1990's She Hangs Brightly. The album would land the group a spot on the Billboard Alternative Songs chart with their cover of the slap happy tune Blue Flower, which would peak at number 29. The album would be one of the strongest debut records of 1990, making the top 10 on the CMJ New Music Report survey of college and alternative rock radio station playlists. Even Nirvana's Kurt Cobain listed the album as his top 50 favorite records. The album still made a pretty big mark four years after its release when Fade Into You hit it big. The track Hala would appear on the alternative song chart. While the band was pretty press shy, Roback would do most of the speaking, telling the LA Times in the early 90s, I think Hope deserves a lot of attention. I think she's a great singer and a great songwriter. When I first heard her, I thought she could be someone like Bob Dylan, someone who could speak for a lot of people her age. Soon after the release of the group's debut record, the US branch of Rough Trade quickly folded and Mazzy Starr was soon picked up by Capitol Records. They would spend the next couple of years working on the material that was to become their sophomore effort, 1993's So Tonight That I Might See. The album would produce the band's biggest hit, Fade Into You, but it may surprise you to know that many people have misinterpreted the song and the pair never anticipated the track to blow up like it did. The dreamy song, whose lyrics talk about heartache and longing, accompanied by a piano and slide guitar, is not actually a nostalgic song and was not written about the past. Roback would tell Australia News, it was never intended to be a nostalgic song, unless you were meant to think about nostalgia for the present, because it really was about the present. We used to walk on the beach a lot and walk around the city, and came almost at the same time. We weren't trying to write a hit song, we were just writing a song. Adding in a separate interview, it was acoustic guitar and both of us singing, and after we'd written a song, then we arranged it for the other instruments, piano and slide guitar and drums, but it started out as an acoustic song. It was a pretty big admission given that Mazzy Star didn't generally like to talk about their lyrical meanings in their songs. Roback would tell the LA Times in 1993, so much about music is overdetermined by television and what people write and say about it. 
You have to leave something to people's imagination so they feel like they can participate. Music is music. We don't want to be part of that over-determination. We feel like you should be able to shut your eyes and listen to it. If you read about what people interpret the song to mean or how they relate to it, it always seems to point either to the past, unrequited love, or the memory of falling in love, all of which point to a past memory. But like Roback mentioned, the song is about the present and the lyrics are written from a present tense. A look at the lyrics paint a picture of the protagonist, presumably Sandoval, attempting to connect with another person, only for that feeling not to be reciprocated, with that person possibly dealing with their own internal issues and having walls up, or possibly being unaware, leaving the protagonist heartbroken. The song would become the band's biggest hit and their only song to chart on the Billboard Hot 100 Speaking at number 44, Fade Into You's success would push So Tonight That I Might See to go platinum selling over a million copies, with the track also peaking at number 3 on the modern rock chart in America. Fade Into You soon saw Hollywood calling with it being licensed for both TV and movies, with one executive from the band's label recalling, and I quote, All those kids have boyfriends and girlfriends and they like to neck, and I don't think they listen to Barry White. Sandoval, meanwhile, has admitted that she sometimes finds herself in a movie theater only to hear the song playing during the film, telling an interviewer, It's a bit strange. You're at the cinema just watching a movie, and all of a sudden your music starts playing super loud. So whatever happened to the band after their successful sophomore effort? Well, Mazzy's star was still kept in the public eye through TV and movie licensing throughout the 90s. In 1996, the band would release their highly anticipated third record, Among My Swan, but it failed to live up to commercial expectations, selling a quarter of its predecessor. Capitol Records pushed the band to work with big name producers and write more commercially accessible songs. But David and Hope pushed back against that. Roback would tell New Musical Express, we want to do what we want to do. We don't want someone coming around and telling us what they think we should be doing. Things got so bad between Mazzy Star and Capitol Records that the group begged their label to release them out of their contract, which they did. Mazzy Star soon went on hiatus by the late 90s and its members drifted into other musical projects. They would reconvene in the late 2000s when Sandoval confirmed to Rolling Stone that they were writing new music but she didn't give a timeline of when it would be released. Then they would return with a new album in 2013 called Seasons of Your Day and they continued to tour sporadically with their latest EP called Still coming out in 2018. Roback would spend his later years in Norway working on music and art until his unexpected death in 2020 from cancer. In 2021, Sandoval would give an interview to Rock and Roll Globe where she was asked about the loss of Roback, stating, Just before the pandemic hit, we suffered the loss of David and it was a massive blow. So everything shut down for me at that moment. And then when the world shut down, it was like, now let's add fear and loneliness to the grieving. What a nightmare it's been for everyone, adding, I've suffered a lot of losses and it's been really difficult. I want to be more like that little green lizard that loses its tail, then something beautiful happens and her tail grows back and everything is balanced again. Having Hollywood license fade into you wouldn't be the most exciting thing the members experience with the song. Roback would reveal, I was in Venice Beach in California and I saw this guy sitting on a street corner playing that song and that's the most exciting I'd ever felt about the song. In 2022, as Kate Bush was making headlines for her song being prominently featured in the Netflix program Stranger Things, one thing that was overlooked was that Fade Into You was used in three big television programs and in an Amazon film, making 2022 one of the biggest years in the song's history. Apart from Mazzy Star, Sandoval has and continues to be part of the group Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions with drummer Cole Moklosiewicz of My Bloody Valentine fame. That concludes today's video guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts about the song Fade Into You in the comment section below.